You're very welcome back to The Daily Rundown with me, Fiona Fox. Now, I've been joined by James Gard and Sean Fowler, and they are a pair of coffee experts or coffee roasters from Heart and Graft Coffee. Hi, guys. Hello. Thank you? you so much for coming in. Uh, I'm very excited, and I will tell you why, because the smell of coffee is possibly one of my favourite smells. No, it is yeah. definitely one of my favourite sm yeah. smells. Maybe it's my actual favourite smell. Yeah. It's brilliant. But this is, this is a common thing, isn't it, the smell of coffee? They, they, you hear stories about real estate or estate agents, people brewing up a coffee pot yeah. when they're trying to sell a house. Yeah. So you're surrounded by this all the time. How lovely. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, it's kind of, it's what we do. So everything we do is kind of roasting coffee, tasting coffee and stuff. So yeah, it's kind of, it is our smell. It's are, you, we, are you kind of just like, uh, I don't no, know, you, you build actually. a tolerance. To you it. do build a tolerance, yeah. Do you? Yeah. It's a magical thing though. People do get very excited about the flavour of coffee. I think even if you don't like coffee per se, there's something about the aromatic side of it and the flavour that people do really enjoy Yeah. as well. And there is just something, I don't know, yeah, there's something magical about the whole, the way well, the flavour comes out and you, you know, it makes you feel good. Yeah, it was an arty thing these days though, wasn't it? It's become an actual art, coffee, coffee yeah. roasting, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. coffee knowledge. It's, it's yeah, actually, yeah. To, like, to be a coffee expert like yourself, it's, it's a very cool and uh, respected thing, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm not cool. <laughs> well, we're, we're cool, cool. We're cool and cool. respected. Between, I think you're both cool and respectful. Um, tell us, I know there's a time sensitive part of the demo yes. that you're going to do. So, yeah. do you want to start and talk us through what you're going to do? And, we'll, and I'll keep the kind okay. of chat going otherwise. Okay, so, so we have two coffees. We're trying yeah. to keep it simple. And these are two really different coffees. We have one from Ethiopia and one from Colombia. So, really far apart in the world. Yeah. Um, and they are, they are the same species of coffee, but they taste so different. Yeah. And a really, um, really important thing is the, uh, the fragrance and the aroma of the, uh, of the coffee. So it's all about the sense of smell. So if you just grab that, have a yeah. smell of that, and just kind of, when you're assessing coffee, you're making sure that it's kind, of, it's kind of got the right attributes that you want. So sense of smell is so key. So what are you looking for though? I mean, that just smells like coffee to me. So yeah, yeah that, no, that's, smells amazing, that's but... good, but it's kind of, it's, it smells of coffee is a great thing, but it's kind of key <laughs> attributes. So we, we buy a coffee from Ethiopia, based on a profile that we know Ethiopian coffee should taste like. So we want it to be kind of floral and fruity and aromatic. And then we might buy a Colombian coffee for a different reason. So that's what we do as a small scale micro roaster. Yeah. We're called artisan roaster. We want different coffees for basically different things. Nice. So we kind of, we buy a Colombian with a kind of a broad profile in mind, but we're kind of buying at the farm level. So specific farms within specific regions. So nice. it's not just all Colombian coffee tastes the same. Because I think I didn't even realise, this is my ignorance now, but I thought Colombian coffee was kind of just coffee. Was, but it's like low, you're, it's coming from everywhere, obviously. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's one of the brilliant things about, so speciality coffee is the area that we work in, like Sean said. Everything we do is based on flavour. So it's not based on price or what you can get for your money or trying to get a product out there. Everything we do is based on, it's got to taste good. Amazing. It's got to taste good. So that's how we choose everything that we roast, everything we, that we put out there as, as Heart and Graft is, is all based on flavour. And we've chosen coffee specifically because we want it to taste chocolatey or fruity or caramelly or delicious or all delicious, but you know, different styles in mind. Yeah. And that's how we do everything. So um, I think that then helps people really engage with, well, if you get a coffee from Colombia, well, there's different bits of Colombia. There's different areas within Colombia. And then there might be specific farms or specific estates right. within Colombia that then taste a certain way because of a certain, then you learn, well, why? Why does that taste like that? And you think, well, it might be the altitude. It might be the variety of coffee that it is. All sorts of things, you know, different factors that come into play. That and then people, yeah. yeah, and people dig into that information. And then you start to get really satisfied because you figure out, oh, I like a, I like a Colombia from Huila. Or, um, but, well, this is what's happened though recently. I know, like, I know you guys are genuinely interested in all, but it's, it's become a very trendy, hasn't it? Like, and the whole hipster movement and all. And so, if you have to kind of, you, I mean, you look a bit sort of, uh, yes, the hipster is it there. Has, but it's, I think it's the but, accessibility. I think it is. Right. It's easier to learn than ever. So, the internet's an amazing thing, but it's also a bad thing, I guess, because it kind of there's misinformation out there. But you can learn about a farm in deepest, darkest Peru. Yeah. And then kind of a farm in Indonesia, it's, it's so accessible. And a lot of these farmers have Twitter accounts and you can talk to them. Oh, yeah, you can yeah. speak to them. How oh, is wow. your coffee grown? Where do you grow it? And can we come visit you? The connections so, are yeah. amazing. Tell us, how did you guys get into this at all? Do you want to go first? Um, I started working uh, in a cafe in Southampton, actually. Right. Uh, hi, Southampton. <laughs> uh, no, but so that was like where I went as a student, and then I got a, when I graduated, I started working in a cafe, and I just suddenly really got on with that environment. And this is like, man, this is back in like 1997, 98, where people were honestly coming in and going, "What's a latte?" You know, it really was that. Gosh, it wasn't yeah, as yeah. you know. 
So I really enjoyed that environment. And then just something about the whole putting of making a coffee, making the espresso, steaming the milk, all that kind of thing. And straight away, there was just like, I really like doing this. So that just started a really long journey of staying interested in coffee. And then about four or five years ago, I just started thinking, there's no one doing it in Manchester. I moved back up to Manchester at that point and just thought, there's no one really roasting specialty coffee, like artisan, small scale, really into flavour. And that seems ridiculous because Manchester's an incredible city and we need to do something like really good for it. Yeah. So I, that's why I kind of, yeah, start, I'm just going to have to roast coffee. So yeah. I bought a roaster, put it in my garage and started roasting uh, there. In your going, garage? Yeah, yeah. This that's sounds occasional for you, I have to say. It's, it sounds like vocational for you. Yeah, I think it is. There's something quite, yeah, a bit of a mission about it. There's something a bit of a, bit of a cause, I suppose. <laughs> You're calling. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's how I got into it. Anyway, <laughs> you were a bit different, weren't it? Yeah, I started um, as a trainee. I, I saw a job advertised in the paper as a uh, trainee, taster and buyer for a big roaster, I thought. Put taster a, and buyer? Yeah, coffee, so right. basically just tasting coffee all day and Goodness. going, learning about every different origin and stuff. And we're kind of, do you want to travel around the world and taste coffee from different farms? And I was like, okay. yes, of course I do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Why wouldn't I? And um, put an application in, didn't think I'd get the job, thought I'll never hear anything back. And then got the job on my birthday, actually, which was quite cool. Happy birthday um, to me. Yeah, How are you? exactly. Exactly. And yeah, and then kind of learned that side, learned the trade, learned loads, and then met this guy. Um, actually, on my first week and in that job, like collided. five years ago. And then we kind of hooked up in Manchester. We're like, like James said, something needs to be done. Yeah. So there wasn't really anyone doing anything of amazing quality. And we know a lot about coffee and we love it and it's kind of our life. So when, when we're not roasting coffee, we're sat in a cafe somewhere just reading the paper and having a few espressos or coffee. something. So yeah, yeah. Which we need to do now. Coffee, yeah, yeah, coffee is my minutes. life should be bumper sticker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so these have been brewing? Do you this say is, this coffee is, brews? This is, this is coffee cupping. Cupping, okay. Wherever you are in the world, whether you when you're tasting coffee professionally, this is how you do it. That's okay. Oh, um, thank you. Do you want to? Okay, I'll talk you through it. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, so, you go. Right. So what you have to do is, and it's quite awkward because normally when you're cupping, you're standing up. Yeah. But, so we'll be. So what you have to do is, you with your spoon, you yeah. break that crust and try and smell it as you do it. I don't know how you're gonna. So you have to get your nose yeah, get really to nose. close to it. Oh, what, okay. Sean? Go on. Okay. Should I shouldn't touch the okay. glass? Should I? No, it, it'll be hot. But, um, so the basic idea is that you've had the ground coffee and then you you activate it, heat it up with water, and brew it like you would a normal brew. So this is like a similar to a cafetiere like you do at home. Yeah. And all that aroma and flavour and kind of amazing aromatic quality is trapped under this crust that's formed. So what you need to do is break it and you need to oh. smell as you oh, break. Okay. And there's like a big gust you, of vapor. That was low, man. Yeah, I'm impressed. Yeah. Limbo yeah. champions of Scunthorpe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Done my back. Um, so yeah, it's all about capturing that gust because once it's gone, it's kind of gone. It'll still smell right, like okay. coffee. So I just, I just yeah. smash in here. Just yeah. get your head in, just go okay. down. That's it. Ooh. Ooh, can yeah. you smell that? It's smell smelling that? amazing. It's kind of a big waft of kind Ooh, of aroma. Yeah, it's strong, it's amazing. And the idea of doing multiple cups is so that you can kind of assess the quality from cup to cup to cup. So the worst thing is you buy a coffee and it's one cup's amazing, but then four cups are terrible. Yeah. You want consistency because our customers are doing lots and lots that of coffees. That happens though they? when you go somewhere, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that is the difference between specialty and commercial is the so consistency. What, what we want to do is compare, what, we've got two different coffees and it's going to be really interesting for you to taste one alongside yeah, another, which is okay. a brilliant way of understanding you know, how coffee can, from a different country can taste so distinct. Yeah. yeah. So you smell that one, Yeah. so smell this one. And then okay, do the exact compare. same thing. Yeah, exact same thing. Get you get right down in there. Very different. Give it a good inhale. Ooh. Different. Yeah, it's, well, yeah. I think it's totally different actually. Though. Yeah, it, is that yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It will be totally a totally different coffee. So oh, yeah, you're right. It is like limboing here a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> I know it's slightly <laughs> awkward in terms of the position, but uh, um, you know. Right. So, but what what am I what am I smelling? The difference is one. So you've got. They still both smell amazing. Like I'm stand by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is the beautiful thing about coffee. about coffee, specialty yeah. coffee. It's really. I mean, this is what got me into it. I was absolutely fascinated by how can the coffee from say I don't know. Well, in this case, we've got Colombia and uh, Ethiopia, and then we might have a different coffee from Brazil or Indonesia or whatever. And they just they're so different. They're and totally different. Why? Yeah. Why? You know why? So you've got an Ethiopian coffee and a Colombian coffee. And the difference is in uh, the actual variety of coffee there is. So a coffee grows as a cherry. Yeah. And so that cherry and how that coffee grows and where it grows will affect its flavor. So much like wine, you know, so the altitude it grows at or uh, the position of the sun and how much rainfall it gets and all those different things yeah. will change the flavor of the coffee. 
Um, so right. that's why you get a very distinct flavour difference. Only really at the speciality end of the market. So your broad commercial coffees, you're not going to pick up a big taste difference, maybe a little thing, but they're going to be pronounced at the speciality end of the market. So um, it's totally, it is influenced obviously by environment and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, people just don't consider that when they sit down to have their cup, sure they don't, I don't think, obviously. Um, well, where do you kind of stand on um, so an instant coffee then? Is that just like, pff, wash your mouth out for you guys? Would you ever drink yeah, it? Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it's, you, it's a one? different thing, isn't it? It's just a completely different, you know, it's uh, part of the culture in a very broad sense, I suppose. People just, we're a nation of tea drinkers, aren't we? So we've all got kettles. Yeah, so we have, yeah. so it's really easy just to like teaspoon. My mother-in-law still insists on drinking instant coffee. I try and make her drink a really nice coffee, but then she goes, oh, that's very nice. So it's called blend ads from the I know, I know, and it's just... Stuck in our culture, they did. Um, they got so. together in the end, so I think. Uh, but every, like, <laughs> we're seeing more and more people investing in really fancy coffee machines, though. Is that what you need at home to be able to produce something like this? Do no. you need something really swish and? Not really. No. Not no. really. No. We would always standalone small ones. Or still, that? my favourite thing at home is a cafetiere full right. of coffee. Just it's, right. Everyone's it? got one in the back of the cupboard. Comes yeah. out at Christmas yeah, usually. True. It's just get good good beans. Invest it. if you're going to invest in a piece of kit. Get a good grinder because. The fresher you keep coffee, the better it is. Right. So if, it you, if you buy, yeah, if you buy pre-ground, oxygen gets to it and it basically goes stale. Okay. So it could be the best coffee in the world, but if it's like three, four weeks old, and it's been pre-ground, it'll just be rubbish. Right. So. Okay. So will we are we have a little taste. We are almost ready. So uh, we don't want it. We don't want you to scold yourself. We'll just go and check. You've All got that. a little bit more of the show to do, haven't you? So you don't want to burn your tongue. No, I also I, I'm just going to keep you awake now as well. You uh, know yeah, what yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we'll, we'll let Sean do a dummy run and see if you. So grab a bow. Just about half a spoonful. Yeah. And then what you're trying to do is basically you're going to slurp it in and basically try and take as much oxygen in as you can because it'll spray it across your whole palate and you've got kind of sensory taste buds all across your whole mouth. So the idea is that you kind of, you're looking for flavour, sweetness, body, acidity, like you would a wine. So okay. do you know when people say, oh, it's a really heavy, yeah, full, heavy, rich, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. oaky, Shiraz, yeah. Okay. And you will taste thing. a real difference. So, um, so slurp one. <laughs> Oh, literally go against yeah, everything yeah, they've been yeah. taught. Oh, absolutely. Oh, wow. okay. It'd be really rude. It's like the rudest restaurant in the world. That's it. Not a bad, good slurp. not bad. So, and then rinse you get spoon. a picture of that flavour. Rinsey yeah. spoon and then go to the next one. And then get try the other one. Because it's contrasting the two that's really interesting, you see. Uh, you're doing very well. It's just a very awkward position for cupping. I think you're, you're, you're taking it on. That's it. That was a slurp, wasn't it? Ooh. So, two massively different coffees. Right. Same species of plant. It is in that theory, moment, there's that like, yeah, oh, it is, that's completely it? different. That, that, that's it, that's the whole thing. Wow. In theory, you could take two plants from the same crop, split them apart across the world, and they're just so different because of, like James said, the soil, the climate, the altitude, how much rain, how the farmer handles it, how we roast it. So it goes on this massive journey. Before and then it ultimately it comes ends to your bag into of a, beans yeah. or however mm. you buy your Or ground. your barista serves you wow. a coffee in your mm. local coffee shop. Well, have do you know, not slurp. I'll, have a, I'll have a big slurp there. You know, I, I don't have loads of time. I have to kind of wrap it up. But that is, so that's, that's your coffee tasting. And that's when yep. that's when you know your coffee kind of. I mean, like, I can taste the difference there. It's so obvious to me. Yeah. Mm. I don't kind of have the words to, like, obviously, I guess it's my first time doing it. But, like, I mean, it's a, a massive difference. Both beautiful, though, I have to say. Yeah, both, yeah, both yeah. Hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> um, tell us, so do you, like, I mean, you, you obviously, do you just help people out, you know, getting to know their coffees and that? That's what that's what the purpose of you guys is. Yeah. And yeah. Your, your, your collaboration together. It's kind of graft. what we do is education as well so people people want to know more people want to learn they might yeah. not they might not know where to look so especially in manchester is kind of what we do we That's kind of just do. basically help people yeah Brilliant. That's it. yeah we're here to help you know cafes coffee shops restaurants anyone who wants to get better at coffee that's what we do. So as you, as you said earlier on, coffee is your life. I want it to be a bumper, a bumper sticker. Yeah, that's it. it. Yeah. That's Guys, it. sorry we don't have more time. Thank it's you so no much for coming in. Um, we'd love to see you again if you'd be into coming in. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Tell us more about coffee. We'd love it. Uh, James and Sean from Heart and Graft Coffee. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, we're going to go for another break. The guys will be back with me after the break. Don't go away. <laughs>